Hey, what's up guys? This is Church of Caboose. And for this Destiny 2 video, it is a guide on the Atrax 1 encounter inside of the Deepstone Crypt raid. As always, the point of my raid guides is to try and provide you all with all the information you could possibly need so that way you can go into a raid knowing absolutely nothing or whatever else activity that guide is about and successfully complete and meet your goal. And so, before we get into the video, if you guys would do me a solid and click the like button, as well as subscribe to my channel if you do enjoy this video. If you would like to be a part of the Vengeful Discord server with around 300 members ranging from folks on Xbox, PlayStation, and PC, make sure you guys check out those links down below. Ways to support the channel are also down below, but the free way that really helps me out is to subscribe, like the video, comment on the video, and share the video. So let's go ahead and get on into this. In this encounter, the main objective is to defeat Atrix 1. But instead of dealing all the damage to one main boss, as is kind of normal in Destiny, we have multiple copies of this boss that we have to defeat over two different maps. We have one area which is on Europa, then we have another area which is out in the space over Europa because we are making our way to Tanix to prevent him from doing something rather devious. Now to complete these different damage phases, there are several functions that must happen. We have the role of operator, we have the role of scanner, and this time we have a retaliation buff. I might be wrong on the, what the buff name is. It's a purple little orb. It's either retaliation, retribution, I don't know. I, I mix up words all the time. It just starts with an R. This buff will be seen on the left side of your screen. If you have that little purple aura, you must get rid of it. And there are a few wipe mechanics throughout this encounter. Just like the battery, you have to shoot the right little copy image of this boss atrix in order to actually do damage and if you shoot the wrong one well then you all get wiped if that purple aura buff thing i just mentioned which is either retaliation or retribution pretty sure it's uh oh it's replication that's what it is it's replication if you destroy if you leave that replication buff on the ground and no one picks it up after a certain amount of time it seems to be about 10 seconds everyone gets wiped if you don't do enough damage to one of these copies then everyone gets wiped and those are really the three main wipe mechanics and every single time you kill one of those images you then have a retaliation buff to pick up so you must get rid of it via an airlock once you have done enough of these damage phases you get to a final stand which is basically the same as before only now it is sped up and most folks can kind of take him out with lament in one or two of those bosses during the final stand so we are going to look at the different areas and how everything works and then I'm going to take you guys through the sequence of events. It's just worth knowing how the two rooms are set up so that way you can kind of picture things a little bit better as I'm explaining them. And then once we go to talking about sequence of events, we're going to start with the Europa room and then we'll end with the space room because they kind of work a little bit separately, but somewhat together for some aspects. So this seems like a decent order to go in. So here is a diagram of the Europa map, the area you first are in when you start the encounter. We can see on this map we've got directed the launch pods at the top middle of the screen in the orange box. You can also see the map is split into three areas, and that is because we have a server that spawns on the left, one that spawns in the middle, and one that spawns in the right. So when we have our two fire teams of three, it kind of makes the most sense to have one person in the left, one in the middle, and one in the right. Then we can also see we've got TL, BL, mid, and TR. 
This stands for top left, which is TL on the left side, bottom left, which is the bottom left air side, boss spawn on the left side, middle and top right. These are where the different boss copies are located at throughout the encounter. So if you are the scanner and you can see the boss is glowing yellow, you can call out top left if it's that boss on the left side on top of kind of like a canopy uh, bridge type thing, bottom left if it's on the ground, middle if it's the one in front of the launch pads, and right if it's on the right side or top right. There's only one, um, it's just usually on the top side, and so saying top right can help folks that are newer because then they know to be on the more upper part of that map. Now, when you do these different damage things, you want to kind of make sure you are all there. So a little pro tip, everyone runs the Ment, because you want to try to do all your damage within less than a second. Uh, but anyways, let's keep on going with this map. Then you can see in the orange or yellowish blocks, we have the augment terminals. There's one on each side, and these are nifty for your scanner to know where these are at. So that way, regardless of where that boss damage is at, they can get really quickly to that augment terminal and send the scanner roll to the space station side. And then vice versa, where they know where to pick up that scanner roll. And that kind of wraps up for our little uh, map thing. The last thing I kind of want to note for our visual here is that usually the operator spawns on the uh, this level. I have you never had the operator spawn up in space, and so you want to just kind of keep an eye out for that operator before you have your space team go upstairs because the operator really should be in that space area the whole time. So now let's go and look at our space visual. Now here we have the visual for the space map, or I like to call it the International Space Station, but that's not what it actually is, it's just what I like to call it. It's very similar to our Europa map. The blue circles represent where the boss copies are at, and then the green circles represent where bosses are at during last stand. Something to note is both Europa and the space maps have four bosses, until final stand at which point everyone goes up to space and there are eight which is why we have those green circles there to signify our multiple different additional copies of the boss otherwise you can see now our launch pads are at the back of the screen or the very bottom instead of the very top and then we have our different terminal locations which are in those orange blocks you can see one orange block on the left one orange block in the middle and this will be on the very lower spot and one orange block on the right both the left and right are on the top floor the middle one is on the ground and it looks just like the terminals from anywhere else the scanner ad which we should be familiar with from the first encounter will always spawn in the space station area so it's very important for whoever your designated scanner is on the space area to have their job to be to locate the scanner and get him down uh, when we get to the sequence events we'll talk about this a little bit more but the scanner and the non-operator should be a little bit flexible in who goes to what side for clearing ads based upon which side has the scanner ad. So that kind of concludes what we have here for the visuals. If you need to, take screenshots. Uh, you can scroll back to get screenshots of the Europa map. But thank you very much to Crazy Corky Queen for making these visuals. To our knowledge from the internet, these are currently the only visuals and like diagrams of where everything is located at on the internet internet to our knowledge so thank you to her for creating these for me and for you guys so for these sequence of events we're going to break this up by a floor so first we're going to talk about how things go when you're on the Europa side of things. To begin the encounter, all six of your teammates will start out on the Europa floor. You should already have designated who will be the three staying on Europa, who will be the three going to the space station, and within those three, who is the designated scanner, who is the designated operator, and who is desired to be getting this uh, retaliation buff to go back or forth or excuse me replication debuff and so once those rolls are set you would then go towards the launch pad towards that purple orb start the encounter and then your six would just clear ads eventually you will have the operator ad spawn as well as the servitors servitors when they spawn only spawn once at the beginning of every damage phase and must be killed in order to activate these different terminals so that way you can pass back and forth the augmentations 
So make sure you get those servitors down rather quickly. Or if you're doing the challenge, just time that whole thing out. Let me know down below if you would like me to do a video about how we accomplish getting the servitors killed within five seconds of each other on both the space and your open floor. And maybe I will do that. So moving on with this sequence of events, once that operator has been downed, your uh, space team, your designated operator, will grab that buff and all three will hop in those launch pads and go upstairs. Now for the Europa team, they just keep killing ads down below and waiting for you to have the damage phase occur. Because upstairs they're doing the same thing you just did in Europa, only there's three of them instead of six and they have the damage phase or extinction protocol first. And then once they have done their damage, the scanner puts that scanner into the terminal and your designated scanner in Europa will then grab that scanner and tell your teammates which one to kill. It'll be glowing yellow and it'll say either top left, bottom left, middle, or top right or right side. Once you have done your damage, that scanner then puts in the buff into the augment terminal and then the top side grabs it and does what you just did. Meanwhile, you should have someone that had picked up that replication buff or uh, with the purple. If you're using the Lament Sword strategy, odds are someone got it by accident. Just identify really quickly who it was, they go into the launch pad, and they go upstairs. And we'll cover how things are getting rid of upstairs, but they need to go to an airlock that is told to them by the operator in order to lose that debuff. You just do this over and over until you get to the final stand, which is that last little tiny tick bar of health that the Actrix has. Once you get to that final stand, all three from down below should go upstairs. It is worth noting that it seems like you have to always do at least a tiny bit of damage in the Europa side of things in order to activate last stand. Several times we've gotten to what should have been last stand and then the boss got a little bit of health back just enough to make it where it wasn't last stand and so the Europa team had to do just a tiny bit more. Then once you are upstairs and all six are upstairs in the space station, that means you do the normal thing as before, only now it's rather quickly and there's not as much downtime between the little damage phases. So that concludes what happens in the sequence of events for Europa. So now let's go ahead and talk about what happens for the sequence of events in space. For the space station side of things, it is incredibly similar to down below, however, it's a little bit more action going on due to the operator role is entirely on the space station. Everything else with how damage is done, passing back and forth the scanner, and then the final stand is the same as below and as described before. So we're going to mostly talk about what the operator needs to do here. So at this point, the operator role was picked up on Europa and the three teammates, the space scanner, the operator and the replication buff picker upper have gone up to space at this point it's the same as below they clear all the ads they kill out the servitors and of course they're hunting down for that scanner buff because the scanner roll only spawns up top once all those things have been acquired they've done their damage phase and there is a replication buff there is one last thing they need to do at this point, there is a replication buff that must be getting, gotten rid of. If you don't get rid of the buff, there is a timer on it. And that timer will either kill the player and then be on the ground and you must pick up the buff again, or you're going to end up having to juggle multiple buffs between multiple people, which is going to turn into an absolute headache. In order to get rid of these buffs, this is the main job of the operator. The operator has really one option to get rid of the buff, which is to use an airlock. On screen, you should be able to see some options coming up where you see my character go into an airlock and the operator shoots the buff off my head. Shooting the buff off the head is only something an operator can do and also will reset the time for that re replication buff. So say you're getting close to the wire, you got a couple of seconds left, the operator can shoot off that buff and then you pick it back up and you will notice the timer has restarted back to its 40 or 45 seconds. Now when we want to get rid of these buffs tends to be right after damage phase and there are airlocks located on the above and below sections in space what you would want to do is you have your people with these replication buffs go to whatever airlock the operator tells you to go to at which point the uh, operator will then shoot open the airlock 
by shooting the panel, just like you know we had those actions from before that involved shooting panels in the uh, crypt security, we have the same kind of a deal going with opening up these airlocks. Once the airlock is open, the player with the replication buff goes inside of the airlock and then the operator shoots the buff off of that player and the player leaves that buff in the airlock and they leave and eventually those doors just close and that replication buff is pulled out into space and that is how you get rid of it. Now, if you time things, you can put up to two buffs inside of one of those airlocks rather consistently. I know there's ways to do more than that, but I'm thinking for the average team, doing about two buffs per thing is pretty typical. And you're going to have to use your brains a little bit on this. Sometimes it makes more sense to get rid of that first replication buff from space because space is the very first team to damage and so it could be a little bit hectic to try and hang on to that one buff while you wait for the Europa group to do their first phase of damage. So what you could do is just after that space team does their first phase of damage, do you get rid of that buff by putting it inside of an airlock and then you wait until you have the next round. So that's that Europa guy would then come up, you would do your own damage there in the space, you both have the retaliation buff or replication buff, and then you put that into an airlock. Some things to know about these airlocks is they do have limited use per damage phase. So every time you reset and by doing killing the servitors, the, the airlocks reset and you're able to use them again because there is a cooldown. So usually what happens is you can only use an airlock once per cycle between servitors and so that operator needs to kind of keep track of which one is which or things to get just a little bit extra crazy because you might be trying to make a last second ditch across to the other side of the map. And that really kind of wraps up how the sequence of orders kind of tends to go for space. So just a real briefly, you have everyone down below on Europa killing all the ads. Once the operator buff is picked up and servitors are down in Europa, the space team goes on to the space station. From there, the space station group kills their servitors and ads while that scanner is hunting down that scanner that scanner ad and then they pick up the scanner roll and at which point you should have extinction protocol occurring which is where you need to do damage the scanner is looking around for whatever copy of the boss is glowing yellow it's like a digital yellow like wall like in front of like like going through that copy of the boss and then call makes the appropriate call out for space and then your team goes and destroys that copy at which point there is a little retaliation purple or buff that drops or excuse me not orange purple and needs to get picked up or else it will wipe your team once that player has said buff then the operator gets rid of it by having that person go to an airlock they shoot open the airlock the player with the buff or debuff steps into the airlock and the operator shoots that off the person's head and the person leaves while leaving that buff inside of the airlock and it just goes away once that damage was done that scanner would have immediately put that scanner roll into the augment terminal and the scanner on Europa would then have picked it up. Once the Europa scanner has picked it up, they're doing the same thing as above. Europa scanner is looking for which copy is glowing bright yellow and you repeat that cycle over and over. Main things are being you have to get rid of that orange or excuse me, purple little orb ball inside of airlocks and you need to be passing that scanner as fast as possible between the damage phases to the other team. Once you've repeated this, like I believe it's about two times per side, then you have the servitor spawn again and you restart the whole cycle. Then you get to the final stand, everyone has to go up to the space station and it is the same as before, only it happens rather quickly. At this point, all you have to do is just kill the appropriate copy. You probably only need to do it twice and the encounter is over. Thank you guys all so much for watching. I really hope this guide helped you out. If you want folks to help you out, I've been getting lots of clears trying to help folks. In fact, I'm working on my flawless run of this raid as I'm recording. And I hope to help other people get clears and get triumphs done. So join our eventual Discord server. Make sure you guys subscribe to my channel because that is a free way to support me and it lets me know because of analytics what videos people tend to like and appreciate over over other pieces of content that i make also comment down below 
and share the video and click the like button because that just really, really helps me out. Other ways to support the channel are in the description box. I really appreciate you guys all so much for watching. Let me know down below if this helped you with beating Atrus. This guy was definitely, Atrox was definitely the hardest encounter for people doing the day one raid. It prevented most people from getting that day one clear, including my team. And it's not the easiest thing to do now just due to the hack. Due to uh, how many uh, mechanics and things there are between the different floors. I really appreciate you guys all so much for watching. I am Church of Caboose. Have a great week and happy grinding, y'all.